Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at dispatch and weave components. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, the reason specifically why I'm talking about these two components is because they kind of seem to work together in some, some situations. Specifically, when you want to take a list of items and you want to break them up into two lists, and then if you want to put them back together into another list with the same sorting order, you can use dispatch and weave, okay? And I'll, sh and I'll show you how that works. I'll show you why you might want to do that. Okay, so first of all, the context here is we're, we're looking at Larkin Street Substation Expansion by TEF Design. This is a project that I just, I just, uh, I found it on the internet and I just wanted to try to model it in Grasshopper as a little case study to get some, you know, to get some video clips out of. And uh, it turned out to be kind of an interesting algorithm, and uh, we got a few a few interesting uh, scenarios, you know, scripting scenarios out of it. And here's one of them. Um, you know, as you can see, we have these panels, and if you look closely in the rendering or in the picture, you can see that some of them are flat on the surface of the wall, and some of them are like lifted on one edge. And it's sort of like in a checkerboard pattern. But also, there's some of them like. Uh, like at the split between the two walls that are at different depths, none of those panels are lifted. So as you can see, there's a we have to create a pattern to figure out which ones we're going to lift off the wall and which ones we don't lift off the wall. So that means we have to, one of the one of the ways we can do this. This is not the only way to do this, but one of the ways we can do that is splitting the list into two uh, uh, two trees. Okay, so. So before the list is split, we have something that looks like this, okay? So these are the starting panels that we have, right? Flat on the wall, we just have the basic quadrilateral shapes that we're working with. And then we do some we do some tests, and I talked about this in the, you know, in the more in-depth video of about this project. We do some tests to figure out which ones we want to use for sheer, for pulling off the wall and which ones we want to leave flat. And out of that, we get some boolean we got a list of boolean values okay it looks like this and this list of boolean values is basically telling us which ones we want to uh, uh pull off the wall and which ones we don't so if it's false um i don't remember if it's true or false but one of true or false is keeping on the wall versus taking it pulling it off the wall okay and then our dispatch component is being used to split that list uh, with with this boolean, so you can see the boolean values are going into our dispatch, and now we have two different values, uh, two different uh, trees. Sorry. And so, how does dispatch work? Um, well, it's it's very simple. We have an incoming list, and we have a dispatch pattern. So our list comes in, and then our dispatch pattern says true or false. So true uh, is A, and false is B. I I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, so that's how that's how our list is working, and that in and, and because we've done that again, there's different ways to do this. This is not the only way to do it, but because we've done that, now we have a list here, and we can make all our modifications to this list, and we can start, uh, and then we can loft only the ones that we want to. As you can see, where where the wall is split up, none of the panels are lifted, and so I needed to you know include that into the the list that stays flat on the wall. And also, you know, alternating, you can see at an, in an alternating interval, like a checkerboard pattern, they're staying on the wall. So, so my list has been split up. So from my dispatch uh, list, all my A values in the A tree, those all get modified with this part of the script. Okay. But all the value, all the, my B tree just totally bypasses all of that stuff and it gets, um, and it gets joined back into the list down the line later. Okay. And but the thing is that uh, what if when we want to join when we want to recreate that list um, and if we want to maintain the same structure which you don't have to but maybe you do need to uh, maintain the same tree structure you can use weave because weave also uses a pattern for weaving our two trees back together um, you know you could use merge like I'll just use this as an example you could use merge to merge um, to merge everything back together, but you're very likely not going to have this the same tree structure. 
Uh, in this case, maybe we did, but we probably didn't have the, We probably don't have the same tree structure. With weave, we have we have the same type of pattern input. So what we can do is use the same pattern in in the pattern input, and then um, we're putting true onto true. So we actually it actually flips, but tr a goes to one and b goes to zero because a is true and b is uh, false and zero is false and one is true. So we just have to flip that. And then now we actually have the exact same tree structure as we started with. So every, so this tree structure coming in here is going to be the exact same structure coming out of the weave component. So what you can do is you do your modifications, which is what we're doing right here. You do your modifications to the, to the a list, and then you can come back at the end of, of the modifications you had to do. Um, you can take that list and, uh, and you can put it into the uh, weave component. Oops. And now we have, um, now we're back to our original tree structure except with our modified components, okay? And that's what we've done here, okay? So that's my little uh, grasshopper tip for you in this video. Hope uh, you learned something and um, I'll see you in the next video.